I like how it's like a Zoom's version of consent is like pressing record and then you get the and then you get the, the thing in your screen. It's like, got it? Okay, I got it. Um good MVP. <laughs> is it creepy? Minimal viable consent. Yeah, MVP. indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um excellent, excellent. Um this is really fun getting together. Thanks for coming. Uh with all the busyness and uh, earliness, Daniel, and uh, um, stuff like that. Really appreciate it. Um, so basically today, oh, nice, Mikhail. I like your background picture. This is what I did for I, this. I'm still working on it. Huh, that's that's funny. That's crazy. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, working on different things. Um, but uh, you know, just first, like, <laughs> I'm really obsessed with this avatar uh, that I, you know, that I found. I feel like I'm kind of like becoming myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that just one of the stock ones built into Zoom, or did you have to like route it through another program? No, it's built in here. Like, oh, sick! I know. It's like. Uh, and I, I wish I could have gotten like a better, I need to do a better voice recording, but I love the idea of like really droll reflections on economic space coming from this kind of <laughs> thing, you know, it's like, it's like, well, no measures, you know, it's, it's, it's a really important topic and we really need to take it seriously. <laughs> like that. So. Yeah, I've always wondered what to do with those. Like I have like this earlier program that I, Bought for fifteen euros, like, uh, but it, they are interesting possibility. This avatar. Well, if you want to throw any up there, I don't know if your avatars work better than your camera. But... Uh, it might need my camera because it it's kind of reads the camera, yeah. it maps the face, so it probably doesn't work without the camera working. Needs the camera to match the face. Um. Well, I, let's, I don't know. It'd just be cool. I think to. Uh, starting to hear what everyone's everyone is kind of doing or what it's what it's kind of been like to in your life and also in thinking through like what it's been like and kind of joining the labs node and its kind of emergentness. Um uh be interested in hearing what your guys' weeks have been like, last couple of weeks and and uh, I think to, for me, the purpose of today is to kind of connect, you know, to see each other and say hi and have fun and uh, and also to like kind of workshop or jam on the kind of performances that we're thinking and also how we articulate those. And I have some um, ideas about ways that we could do that, uh, that we could workshop those. And I also have... Uh, um, and I, an, an idea of kind of what we can set up as like a, a target and like in how we want to do, like how to, how to register those performances and, you know, um, but I'll get into that in a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I, mean, I don't know, Pablo, do you want to start? Just how, how are you? No. Yeah, I can start. Nice. Um, I'm a bit low on energy, basically, because I have this chronic back pain that I'm struggling with right now. It's not so bad, but it just, it gets me tired. Like I'm exhausted. Uh, so yeah, that sucks a bit. But otherwise I'm, I'm happy. I'm doing well. Um, the, the work we've been doing for the cover and the diagrams has been really intense, but also really rewarding. I'm happy with that. And my other work in neighborhood has been going well. Uh, it's really ramping up. So that's exciting. That's I cool. also bought tickets to go to Mexico next month. In, Wh in when April. are you going? In April. What more exactly? Yeah, from all, all April basically, I'll be there. Okay, yeah. where? Where are you? Mexico, Mexico City? City. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna be there too. Really? Beginning, okay. Nice. Begin, beginning of April. Seven. Okay. And, great. Seven, eight, nine, ten, most likely. Oh, amazing! We should totally meet. Yes. Totally yeah. 
I'm I'm going basically because I I will do some paperwork, important paperwork, but also I'm going with my partner for the first time. They're visiting, so that's really exciting. Um so yeah, I, I would say mostly I'm happy, a bit in pain, but mostly happy and excited mm -hmm. about this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's should I pass it on? We yes. can hear from Daniel. Good idea. Good idea. Sorry, yawning. Um, <laughs> what am I doing? Um, I'm I'm in grad school at Pratt, and that's just a lot of work. Um, taking up a lot of time. Um, I had class with John yesterday, and we were uh catching up about some crypto stuff, some exa stuff, um, and. I've been reading through the earlier draft of the um, EXA book yeah. that I had, and Joel just shared me the, I guess, the, the final text. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I I know after reading through the, the early draft the first time, I knew I had to read it a second time to really get it. So I'm glad to have the new version to look over um, for one yeah. of my classes uh, with my professor Minha which is focusing on public writing. A lot of people are doing op-eds, um, but I'm doing this book review of the EXA book. Uh -huh. uh, and in the coming week, I'm supposed to get my first draft of that together and then the rest of the semester work on revising it. Um, so, cool. yeah, I've been right. reading the EXA book and also reading all sorts of other books that are that the book is in conversation with reading um yeah like some of Robert Meister some of um what's his name um like Knowledge Limited all, mm -hmm. oh, nice. Randy Martin yeah yeah great did you read the uh Jonathan's new forward um I yeah I did I read it last night right after Joel sent it to me yeah. what, what did you think I was very tired I was uh out at an art opening yesterday um and I had had some beers and then came home and was excited to see that John what John had written so I took a look at it and honestly it kind of went in in one eye and out the other <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's like it's one of my favorite favorite things. It's like I love how it. Oh, I was excited about it. Like that's why yeah, I, 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 I was like, this is so <laughs> much. I just like just like extrapolates the framing for for why I got involved in EXA, you know, in a way. Like all these mm. exact, like potentials. He just like not only says them, but then like expands them, you know, and then the way it. And then it sets up exactly what was always kind of implicit in, in the book. So, yeah, I'm super pumped about it. Yeah, I, I'm glad that he really, like, blows up the the racial capitalism paradigm and hones in on that, which is um, implicit in the rest of the book, mm. but I don't think as explicitly described. Yeah. Um, especially that Jody uh, Malamed text which we also mm -hmm. read in his class like a couple weeks ago and discussed so oh, uh, yeah. yeah that's great man yeah. Yeah, you want to pass pass it on pass the back. oh yeah um peko let's let's hear what's new peko <clears throat> once i manage this complex task of unmuting myself so <clears throat> yeah like it's been a bit busy because I've been, been kind of switching between being sick and there has been various exa exa labs deadlines. Um, um, but I'm kind of getting over the sickness. Um, uh, meanwhile, like uh, I've been doing some, I would say, like semi successful hacking on on further these sort of organizational structures, which touch upon XORG and uh, things that stem from that um, a little monster or a big monster, who knows, like uh, which are kind of promising uh, in, in terms of 
uh, how they look at organizations. And as a kind of side note, like I, uh, I was invited to this, as I mentioned to some of you earlier, this Primavera, Chessicate, etc. their execution group. Uh, and I was there yesterday, uh, like, uh, and it's rather interesting how, how there are certain interesting correlations because, of course, they're kind of looking at organizational situation, but from their own point of view. Mm -hmm. But um, but to uh, but there is a, certainly a feeling that some like they certainly have their own direction, but some of the things that they are struggling with have been uh, m maybe longer in our table, and maybe there are some some solutions. Like uh, like what? That's it. That's a kind of worms to open, but mm, like, okay. like, uh, like, uh, how do I put that in a couple of sentences? Like, essentially, like the whole, um, like their task currently, what they've undertaken mm. is to kind of, uh, frame the institution as an existing concept. Like, they want mm -hmm. to make an academic argument for that, right? Um, that's one thing, but then on the other hand, they also want like practical existence for this institution. Uh, and and that's that's actually uh, not so far along, like uh, I would say. So um, so when one looks at the sort of practical operations of execution or execution like things, it, it, there's so much palette structures that I think they're still missing. Uh, but mm -hmm. but it, like this has been in a like a very positive spirit. Like in like it seems like that they kind of mutually feel that maybe there's something to gain from this relation. So yeah, so it's been it's been rather refreshing to see another angle to same questions or similar questions. That's cool. That's really cool. Hmm. And that's about it. Like that's what's long enough. Okay. Who would you like to target? Oh yes. Um, so let's I'll target Mikhail and Pablo, and let's see who goes first. I already spoke, so it's gonna be Mikhail. He still t targets you in any case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're targeted. <laughs> like, you, you have to say something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was kind of like to make the error, or it's not really. An error. <laughs> <laughs> you fall for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Got you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, well, I next, well, first, like next uh, Wednesday, I have a final meeting uh, for this one course that I have been co teaching, which is called uh, uh, Text and Imagination. So, different, like, uh, creative ways, so to say, to, to, to arouse imagination by doing, for instance, different sorts of like structural or uh, conceptual uh, choices uh, when when editing or writing uh, your text, and uh, otherwise, well, uh, more uh, on this like uh, extra lines. Uh, well, I have been thinking about how to say, well, more more like uh, okay, things that have been done and uh, kind of what should be done next and how would it look good, so to say, for one certain application, for instance. But uh, yeah, otherwise, I'm I'm feeling pretty. Mm, happy because I had this uh, like one hundred percent like uh, substitution, you know, like uh, work that kept me very occupied, and uh, now I have more more time, so so that's good. And also makes me immediately more creative. In a sense. I feel good. Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Great. Hey, uh, so so from my side, yes. So I've been here in in the north for the past two weeks, 
here here in Lapland, and it's been a lot of lot of fun uh, with the with the with the family and uh, extended family. So a lot of cross country skiing, randonneur skiing in the back country, and uh, it's it's pretty amazing here. I kind of um, I, I really like the nature over here, uh, but working at the same time very hard <laughs> so so we got the one one key thing was the we got the book manuscript the economic paper manuscript like now finally sent to the publisher it's at minor compositions we kept the, the kept to the deadline which was the end of end of february basically and dick, dick kind of a really steamrolled and kept that going uh, uh and it, it's, it wasn't easy because that we re rewrote one and Entirely new chapter. A lot of stuff got like rewritten there, and uh, and um, kind of a, all like, and some of them. In the process, we also had to get go, get into the very core of some, if not conflicts, but some kind of a Debates, fundamental yeah. fundamental kind of a disagreements which were not settled or solved, but rather kind of a pushed under the carpet a little bit but now we had to, had to face them and kind of uh, solve them in like in one hour <laughs> wow so, so it had, had was that? Uh, well it, it wasn't so easy but on the other hand it was really good because everyone Jorge included and, and Dick Dick was everybody was really committed at getting this now done and this doing things in a very like uh, intensive rhythm together there's a kind of a high there that you uh, I enjoyed a lot and I think everybody did so we actually like to get those rhythms going uh, uh, it's always kind of uh, important and difficult too but when you get it then then you feel it that now things are moving and we're getting done things done like I think you had with the diagrams too like a separate sub rhythm uh, for getting those done by the way Pablo I just got a message from Stephen that he said that he would need the 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 uh, the, the f diagram files as a separate file. Dick had put the diagrams to the text, but he doesn't want it like that. Do you have a separate file? Yeah, it's not a problem. I made a okay. Google Drive folder with everything. I'm still Perfect. waiting on on Jorge to make some tweaks to the commodity exchange ones, and I don't okay. know how that is going, but should be almost done. Yeah, just okay. Waiting for him. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so I'll I'll let him know then. Basically, yep. we could. It's one one diagram is missing, and we will send it to him when, what, like uh, today or by the end of the weekend. It could be. It kind of depends on Jorge, but I think we are. Yeah, a couple of days. Uh, so he needs okay. to make his tweaks out. Yeah. Yeah, early next week, I think. If we have a last meeting on Monday or Tuesday, okay. should should be done. Okay, perfect. I'll let him know. Because the aim is that we will have the PDF version ready by the uh, end of end of March, because we have this seminar at Essex about it. Yeah. And still, you would like to have the, the PDF ready, ready by that. And then that, if we have the PDF ready, then it means that we will actually have the physical book ready for, for May. Yeah, which is great, great, exciting. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and so so that was that was a big thing. Then an um, other big thing is was the was the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, um, the Meta Museum thing, the National Gallery thing, which which the Exalabs company has been waiting for, and we've been like waiting and preparing that. Now the competitive tendering is on, and it's it's pretty intensive the timeline we need to have like one more week to basically finalize the our offer and it's looking i think very very probable that we will will we will get it and and it's 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 going to be exciting for i think for all, all of us yeah. for for the also in the labs node so that's important um kind of for what we've been working on and then then the the other thing is the i've been preparing to 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 I finished the like the update brief for the early contributors and investors, and we are starting to send the extra tokens now out. Uh, the historical distribution continue with that next week, which is great. Uh, then 
Then, yeah, then there was the, the Mexico thing. I'm going to put this. I don't know if you know this Benjamin Bratton uh, anti, anti catera thing. Yeah, I know about the program. Yeah. Yeah. So you do. Nice. Yeah. So, so they are, uh, I put it to the chat. Maybe I can put the other one there too. Yeah, this is the. Oh, like a bigger description, but anyway, and Project One, with with whom we've been talking, like seriously, they are also funding the anti terra program. So, and they are going there. So, so they invited also us now there, to kind of uh, to meet and share. And 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 when you read this, what they are like proposing or thinking about it, it just comes very close. Uh, yeah. to what we it's, what to what we've been we've been working on so so that's in mexico city so, so i'm gonna i promise that i'll go there uh and then let's see and we, hopefully we will get get the discussions going with one project before that now too so that's great and then the austria thing i mean we, we should also set up the kind of like who is going what can we have like x labs node like a retreat thing there before the Austria thing. Jakob was talking that he would like to organize one seminar right after the Austria thing. Mm, no. uh, I mean, Bruno. So that those things basically need to get get set set now pretty soon. Dick, Dick is, he needs to buy the tickets pretty early uh, because of the prices and so on. So those things are now coming over now the book is done. Then the next step is the NFTs. This is what I'm, I've been thinking: the NFT and kind of like that, the glossary. So I'm, I'm. That's where my orientation is going. And uh, uh, otherwise, I've been skiing a lot, both cross cross country and and in the back country. Yeah. Nice. Sunday, getting back home, to south. Oh well, there you go. Huh? Cool. All right. Um, well, yeah, I'll, and myself, I'm doing I'm doing pretty good. It's, yeah, it's very, it's lots of work. It's very snowy here, which is great. We haven't been able to get out cross country skiing much, but uh, even though we love it, but it's just been been busy, busy, busy. Um, but yeah, it's I recorded an album last weekend, uh, which I've been planning to do for a, a long time. It's my seventh album, and it's a solo solo piano. It's my first. Um, recording I've been playing piano for many years but so it's kind of a certain project I've had in my mind um, and it went super well so it's like a, it'll become like a double vinyl um, and it'll be called Elliot so that's mm -hmm. exciting uh, I, I'm very excited about it as an, art, an artistic work I'm like it's the I've, I've always been a musician my whole life um, and toured professionally but this is maybe one of the most ex most excited I've been about. So that's really cool. Uh, yeah, super pumped about all the work that's been happening in the node and, uh, and, and it's kind of, I like that we're kind of just figuring out this performance thing, you know, and, and uh, I think it's exactly how I kind of would like it to happen. And so I hope it feels good for everyone as we kind of, uh, I'm, I'm always, around but i always appreciate any feedback you know like about how you think it's going um because there's always you know as we're doing it we're kind of like operating the onboarding we're operating like the co-knowledge building um and like i've said you know and i want to keep on repeating it like i think this first cohort of labs node members we're, it's like we're kind of asking of each other um that uh you know, that we do stuff that's the purpose of the labs know, but we also kind of have this meta reflective eyes on where we're like, oh, how did that procedure feel? Or, you know, and I think that's also why we wanted to approach the different people that are part of it, because you guys are all think already in that way. You kind of have that, which is kind of a blessing and a curse. It's, you know, and it's 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 definitely like a, a one of those characteristics of exa exa people, these people that are kind of like have this kind of like split mind, you know, they're like talking about the thing at hand and they're also thinking about how people are talking and organizing in that moment. So, <laughs> so, um, you know, that's a, that's a fun part uh, about it. So, so yeah, so I, uh, maybe I'll just segue into, into kind of discussing, 
I'm going to lay out what me and Marlena kind of came up with yesterday. So me and Marlena basically like, uh, the, I think we're, the performance, the performances that we're going to articulate for ourselves and present to the group are going to be around this kind of uh, building the infrastructure of the exit network, you know, from this like admin side. And building out that um and so that that's why we were talking about that and and she couldn't be here today because of the time difference so we had a really really good conversation and uh, she's so smart at uh, thinking about co-design practices she comes from the world like activist um, um performance creation in a, in the in the mode of the creation of co-design creation so uh we talked a lot about that and and about how to kind of make make this kind of iterative, you know, like if I sh share the, go back to this diagram, if you remember this diagram, hello diagram, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, which, yeah, I know I still need to kind of fix it with some of the comments, you know, because these are, <laughs> these people and these people are the same people. I remember that was, that was a comment, like they should be one people in the middle, but, uh, um, but instead I've been making other diagrams for other things, so I need to fix it still. But, um, Basically, the idea, the pitch that I'm giving is that in, in like you know, in a week and a half, you know, like basically a week from next Wednesday, I propose we do this, you know, mm -hmm. and we just we just kind of set that deadline, and and that that will allow us to kind of gamify the making the writing of these performances, you know, and having the offer market, you know, in a way that we can learn from it, you know. And especially yeah. measures, and I think that let's just just like you were saying, Excelly, about the book. You know, it's just like, well, here's the we're just going to do it. You know, and we're going to learn from it, and and we're going to kind of hold space for uh, saying that meta comment about like, oh, well, this the way of doing this could feel a bit better this way, or and then at the same time, we'll also get this kind of uh, um, you know sheet for our performances and maybe it's not a maybe it's not a whole quarter you know what i mean like there might be some adjustments here to help us feel like you know we're just starting out and we have a few other people join the the, the node uh leo and jesse are going to join um from an agency and they're gonna so they're gonna uh, i've been meeting with them and i can give an update on what they're kind of i'm thinking about working on so um, that's cool I mean, jesse was crashing on my couch for the last like half week well he uh, passed through New York. <laughs> really yeah he didn't have a place to stay and my friend conrad in introduced us um it was lucky like someone one of my there's six rooms in my apartment and one of them became vacant so we had an open room and, oh wow um, yeah it was That's <laughs> hilarious. yeah so, I, so was, I was talking to him a bit about exa stuff or like he, he we found that connection that he had been involved in it oh, I guess like a year ago at first or or like knew knew you guys somehow um yeah we were <laughs> chatting about that yeah oh that's I'm cool. glad he, um yeah I got in touch and is getting involved that's cool I remember he told me that he was trying to contact you and like uh and, and <laughs> I was like oh that's cool and I think he was trying to figure out like work to do for the lab you know and and yeah and i love that he just ended up staying with you yeah <laughs> that's wonderful um yeah i'm excited about those those guys i think uh jesse you know has a really great we did a really good session for instance on like examples right like, what are the examples of the new economic space and, and uh and he was really he's really great at like marketing communications for growth and so we did this sweet diagram, mm. in, you know, while talking of like uh, low income housing, you know, and and uh, like the new economic space. So it was really great. And I think, and I think uh, Leo has a lot to offer in terms of kind of taking these concepts and operationalizing them in kind of online spaces and new ways and, and then thinking through what those, how those concepts backfeed. Um, so, yeah, so excited about that. And, uh, um well so yeah and i was thinking that we'd use lumio and and not have an in-person offer market but have like a, a spread of a few days that works for asynchronous you know where we can where we can kind of propose our things and discuss them and, and practice feedback 
on them. Uh, so, so that's what I was uh, thinking about that. Uh, why, why Lumia? Uh, I just, I just like the, the kind of asynchronous approach. You know, I've used it before, uh, um, mm. and it, you know, it kind of, I feel like it, it has a good vibe for being able to register because you know we, we, I think the voting mechanism is nice. Like in the, in the labs codex, you know, mm. um, there's a basic threshold that every performance proposal needs to cross, which is like three acknowledgements. You know, which is not the same as like backing it or joining it but it's just saying like this is a basically this is this seems like a good offer you know what i mean like this can you know but it can also have a counter offer you know so you can you can acknowledge an offer without joining it but your acknowledgement as a node member is really significant because if a performance doesn't get it needs to get three you know at the moment out of you know so which is not that much it's a low threshold so it allows for um it allows for kind of difference of perspective, which always there is, which is an important politics. And so, anyways, Lumio is just a way to like you have the proposal, you have the voting, you know, you can um, that kind of stuff. Do you do you think yes. there's a better place to to do it? I mean, it might be interesting, like if Lumio stretches to this kind of voting, non-voting, but if it does, like it might be like a useful test. Right? I, I kind of like every environment is a new thing to learn, but there's not much to learn in Lumio. And but also every environment is a new way of looking at things. So, but it's it's good. It's also like the three, of course, is a dial. Like it's like it could be four, it could be seven, it could be ten percent of the membership. But that's that's also exactly. one. It, it's testing the structure, but it's also like. A, if that's too much, it's easy to change. So that's also something. That's right. That's right. We're we're experimenting together, and and that's why this is like a, a living laboratory, you know, meeting. This is like we want to constantly reinstantiate that laboratory sense, which is like any kind of resp like you know, if we're saying like, oh, I want to counter offer this, or I want to give this comment to a performance proposal, we should never say or take that as like kind of critique, you know, at, at this moment, you know, um, because it's, you know, we are kind of all playing the roles of these different things. So, so we're all doing each other the service by sharing something, even though it's not finished, even though you're not sure. And we're all doing a service by, by counter offering because we're kind of operating the different years of it. Um, uh, so, so yeah. Um, hi, Jakob. Yeah, hi, hi everyone. Yeah, um, apologies for joining later because there was the work meeting, but at least for a oh, for a bit. It's all good, man. Some Jakob crashing the party. I like it. Coming in with a six pack. Well, it's hard to say a six pack at eight a.m. Yeah. But that's okay. Um. So yeah, Excel, did you do you not like Lumia or do you? No, no, no. I, I, we've been using it a lot uh, with the with the Robin Hood for the all the general meetings. I always run in, in, in the Lumia. It it has a cost structure, uh, and and but let's see if it works. Sure, anything that works, let's let's test it. Yeah, I like there being an async option at the beginning. You know, just to it's great. I want to continue having these meetings, but also I think I'm mm -hmm. thinking about. How we use the Discord to how we kind of populate it and talk, and I really appreciate everyone who's interacted uh, in the Discord. You know, really, really appreciate just like the comments back and the thoughts, and I, I, I think it, it, it's allowed me to think through stuff around measuring, and uh, and really help feel like the space is alive there. So I think that's a that's another goal. You know, it's it's always interesting to kind of add another place to check. You know. Like, like, do you take away another place that you're checking, you know? Like, so, um, you know, that's how I was like, oh, how should I even announce this thing? So I'm just going to, I'm going to keep on trying to do stuff there. And in fact, we could be meeting there instead of Zoom or um, stuff like that. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, that's, that's my basic, my pitch is that in a week and a half, we, we put together like the, like, 
these performance proposal sheets, you know, which you can use. Um, maybe I'll go over this. Uh, and then I thought we could like workshop some. Maybe we should just do that, like uh, just go straight into that. Uh, but is there any like uh, comments or thoughts uh, um, before we kind of jump into that kind of workshop mode? Um, love to hear anything, basically. Um, I also appreciate the Discord and, and especially all the work that all the people having conversations there are doing and Joel always keeping it lively. Um, <laughs> thanks. I'm going to bring the dog head there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can I do it from here? Here we go. Okay. That's, that feels better now. Oh. Feel so much more comfortable. Um, yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. So I mean, like, that's. Could you zoom in a bit? Totally. Yeah. Great. Great. These are beautiful, by the way. I really. What's that? They are beautiful, like this uh, oh. sheets. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I was I was I was happy with the, how they looked. Oh wait, what? Yeah. Wow, it's my name. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real you. Um, yeah. Um, so I I don't know. We could just go through it like this. Are you happy with that, Pablo? <laughs> Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Like I was gonna say, I'm eager to work out through some examples. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was like, let me go over the sheet again. I'm like, why don't we just jump right into just going through the sheet in this way? You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, one one thing I've been I've been thinking about, maybe while hmm. you write, it's just to add context, is yeah. um like I engage with this uh, graphic word work kind of intuitively, and I'm wondering how much um expressing a performance would change that uh intuition which until now has worked great right like in terms of flow and commitment and communication so i'm just wondering mm. yeah how does bringing things to the realm of a form um, changes that how to keep some of the fluidity that it mm -hmm. has um that it already has Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's kind of like a, a, a struggle, I think, between mm -hmm. for formalization and intuition. Um, so it's it's an interesting case just because the work is already starting and we're doing a bit of it um, retrospectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, nevertheless, I understand it's just an experiment, so should be fine. But that's kind of like my the tension I'm holding around. Love it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that that's such an important tension to hold, like uh, in terms of like the ephemerality of uh, you know of of some of these things that we do that are valuable, partially because they are not tracked in the typical way. You know. Yeah. So I think that mm -hmm. that's when we come down to measures. I think that's when it gets into like, you know, yeah, what are the measures of this? You know, and I think being like, you know, we want to have some that are kind of hard or, you know, but everything has to have a number, but you can have it be of something that is is quite weird, too, you know? And I think that when we gather around those measures, um, uh, yeah, and, you know, people experiment with this on lots of discords and, like, in the sense that okay. they did it for years around, like, they did so okay. much creating their own emojis and their own, like, uh, and their own, you know, little graphic things to indicate some kind of otherwise um, interaction with value besides like thumbs up and like and you know or whatever. Um, and so that's kind of like a micro political approach, and 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 I think that's important. I think the other thing here is kind of like I said in the Discord a little bit, like always keep it in mind that like we get kind of taught, I think, this to make invisible institutions which are there maybe uncomfortably you know with, with right there with our performances you know like in grad school or you know in a lab or in a nation the context of a nation and its laws and its norms 
And so this is kind of bringing that to the front, you know, in a way. So in a way, I'd say that this stuff is always there. And it's like, and, and it's a little bit of a performance. I come from performance studies. So it's a bit like a debate within performance studies. So like whether, whether performance art is uh, its, its holiness, is its in, in, in its ephemerality, or if that's not actually it, it's more about its, uh, its machinicness that can be remembered or not. Um, that's kind of a, maybe an esoteric point, but uh, you know, Peggy Phelan would represent the one side, um, and people like Stefan O'Harney would represent the other. Like where we step into the logisticality of how we package ourselves, uh, kind of as a political action, even you know, and it, and because it, it, it has a discomfort to it, and uh, I think preserving some of the fluidity is should is a great kind of a research goal in this living laboratory. Yeah. Oh, can I just add it right in there? Um, so, so here we are in the, and, and Pablo is going to, you know, it's like, and, and it, I think there's also like just a basic thing. And this is something I think Peko is good on, um, as well as many things that he's great on. But like, this is like, you have to think about scale and maybe this should be indicated here better, but like, you know, like, uh, Performances and sub performances, you know, like, like, and you asked this question, Pablo, like, what should we title? What should we title? What do you want to title this, basically? How, do, what's, like... yeah, good question, because I guess that creates the um, umbrella term and how much it encompasses, right? Because, right, um, I guess we started on the, um, we started on the cover and the uh, diagrams, but really, this is like a broader, kind of update on excess visual identity mm -hmm. which is a broader communication strategy so yeah i don't know where to draw the line but i think visual identity would be uh, what i personally feel more comfortable or within my realm of performance i guess mm, yeah like maybe developing excess visual identity yeah developing i mean i think there is a visual identity already developed so maybe it's um i would say update activation re uh <laughs> i don't know uh, i love it yeah i like activation you could do like developing excess visual identity and then put even bullet points under like uh, updating activation like uh it might give a good kind of breakdown on it that allows it to think about it separately. Because yeah. it's also like you, like I was thinking about how do you take that as the main topic, but also include the specific case of the cover, because mm -hmm. it does exist. Like, in, like, and this is kind of learning this expression because like, like honestly, both should be involved. And then I, I like that you're starting from the, what is this really doing? But then also how to say, what was the con one concretization on it? Because it shouldn't be left out. No, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Let's see. Ooh, micro stories, yeah. Do we have some comments? I just read Jacob's uh, comment stories. in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, and this is, this is also the way that, you know, like I remember this is still one of the ways that sticks with me from Berlin, like Leo talking about these things as stories and narratives, you know, um, and, uh, and futures. And, and they're, they're all great words for the kind of the, that fit into the offer structure here, you know, and yeah, the, yeah. The, no. the utilize, yeah, so like, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Go, go. Yeah. No, no, sorry. Sorry. I didn't, uh, I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, Please. Yeah, there was a little bit of lag. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And the, 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 the link or the, Kind of sense maker framework just popped to my mind that could be relevant perhaps to framing some of the performances or measures because uh i kind of like that they are transcending the scale or like the the the, 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 the let's say the ordinal numbers for measuring stuff but they are going some somewhere to the space between the qualitative and quantitative using those kind of triangular uh semantic spaces and enriching them with the micro stories and so perhaps this framework i'm not sure if you're familiar with it or the methodology that could also inspire some of the uh exploration or 
experimenting. So I've shared the link in the, in oh, the chat. Right. Uh, Thank you. All right. I'm there. I'm always like, I'm always wary of like uh, clicking on the chat when I'm sharing my screen. Mm. You know, you never know what's going to be in the chat. Yeah, and, and because there are some pictures on like how they are, I can yeah I can. Sometimes them. sometimes Jakob just private messages me. He's like, you suck, Joel. I'm like, whoa, Jakob, that's so hardcore. Uh, no, no, I, I wrote it in the public chat. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> in the public. Chat. I don't want to show everybody that that you feel that way about me. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but there is the, the, the this I can uh, I can share the screen afterwards or something because there's a nice image of how they are capturing some oh, of the measures. Good. So it's even the interface is kind of nice. I, I'm going to find another. That's great. So so Pablo, do you feel happy with like developing X's visual identity? Is like you know a sense a big story. And, yeah, and and it could and this is something that. Like obviously we don't have to be too worried about it, you know. It's okay. uh, we can always change it because we're this is a living laboratory. Um, but you could, for me, this kind of could go on beyond three months. Obviously, something like this, it could. Yeah. Uh, but it could also you're like, oh, that probably has a lot of steps to it. What do you think? I like it. I mean, developing. I'm not so sure. Definitely, excess visual identity should be there, but we can move forward and later. Uh, yeah. find a word, another word if necessary. Great. Yeah. In in terms of like looking at this area, micro stories as performance description, there's an old Robin D. Laws mechanic uh, from games, which is that um, to characterize them. Well, in this case, it was a character, but it works in this case as potentially as well. Is that you write a micro story precisely like, uh, like. A small one, but then you underline from the story the elements that you think are functional, operative, important, the ones to watch. Because I think it's important to kind of think like if you make a story, it might be hard then to kind of pinpoint what to measure. But combining this technique, uh, the technique was uh, precisely designed for this. It's like you write the story, but then you put like, uh, there is a particular concept that uh, you underline that uh, to mark that this is the really the thing to measure here. And so, so that's, that's an op operation that can work, has <laughs> worked in, in, in terms of design. Okay. I might need your help in knowing how to, where to put that, because I'm interested in exactly that, because that's that what you're saying is like, you're already kind of forecasting this is like that, that measures thinking already embedded. I think that's exactly what we want to kind of grow in together is being able to think like, what is, yeah, how do we want to measure that? Or, or how is the measure already implanted in the thing in a way that maybe we're not innately trained to see in our current kind of uh, society of production? It could be like, I don't think the technique has a name, but you could put like underneath micro stories as, as a bullet point is like underlining key terms for measurement or, or, or for performance measurement, underlining key terms from the story as a measurement. Yeah, or not as a measurement, but as, as for informing uh, the mm -hmm. measure of performance. Mm. Nice. Um, and another question here is like, what working group is this in? This is another kind of goal. I, I think you know we don't want these to become like siloed spaces. We want to stay all together. I think for the time being, you know, these will these different working groups will become you know hopefully uh, their own nodes. You know, eventually. You know, but but for now they are. And we don't want them to be like siloed into their own things. Maybe maybe people in the working groups like will have their own meetings, but not anyone can join, and it's all visible. I think we should have different channels for these things. You know, with the to the extent we need that in the Discord. But you know, just to, just to say, and maybe I can make that be a bit more indicative here that you know these aren't different clubs; these are like different strands of interest for different parts of our. Our avatar. Um, nice. So, what do you think, 
Paolo, what Intuitively, you... definitely communicating and yeah. maybe a bit of playing. Yeah, yeah. So we go over here. Right. We should try to uh, maybe apply some percentage of involvement. Like maybe it's 70% communicating, 30% playing. Well, I, that's what I, yeah, let me, yeah, that, that's cool. Um, I mean, I don't know, like because, maybe it's a different ratio, but it's interesting to think of it in that way. No, because I wanted to, uh, this is what I was trying to kind of do oh. here, like in this like percentage distribution outcomes. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, but let's uh, let's put it here. And because maybe if it goes better up here, maybe it needs another little. Setting. I mean, I, I think th this could have um, some impact on process of accountability. So who who gets to mm -hmm. to give uh, formal input on on these uh, measures and outcomes? Maybe I'm not sure. Something like that. Yeah, I mean that's that that's in a way. I mean, I mean this is all up for discussion. But in a way, I I still see us as doing the. It's like the, you know, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's kind of the people that will kind of weigh in on the measures is kind of all of us, you know? And, yes. and for sure there's a, there's an organic connection to other people in those different working groups to, they'll be especially drawn and interested in, in what you're doing. And, um, and they'll be the first ones to kind of probably be like counter offer, be like, Oh, I'd like to see this measure there. Or, you know, or I think that would make it stronger or, but you know, still, everyone in the node can be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Let's we back this measure, you know. Like I think so. It's I think it's trying to bring in this kind of peer-to-peer uh, -peer valuation, um, you know, which is again is an experiment um, for us. But there's an there's an older uh, meaning that it's not in the codex, but probably or possibly should be as a possibly the older mechanic, which is. Uh, which is called eval or evaluation and but it's it's a simple but nifty way of making kind of very modern way of treating evaluation is that any operation including a particular thing on an offer like identity or the whole offer you can mark and evaluate who evaluates which can be also a group of people and then you can also uh take from a template or write what is the met method of evaluation. Because evaluation can be pass or fail, or it could be giving comments, um, or it could be something else. Like, and like if it's treated in this sort of modular fashion, you can you can potentially use it for anything and, and also like have this sort of, uh, address this sort of quality of evaluation. Like it's sometimes it's very useful to get written comments from some somewhere. Sometimes you need the rigorness of pass or fail, but not all the time. So it's a simple thing, but it it works. It, uh, I might have to uh, find the description of it. That's yeah. that's really interesting because we've already been, uh, for example, with the work in the diagrams, we've already at some point we were like okay this actually who needs to evaluate this is dick dick needs to decide if these diagrams work or not and he has the final call mm. right like it was super clear uh yeah. who who held um a final call on that decision whereas for example the book cover has been a more broad um exploration with more subjective inputs uh so that is in yeah, the, and uh, I think you froze, but let me just uh, comment on that exactly, like um, in terms of how we're setting up this performances, like basically the reason why Dick was the person to kind of evaluate that offer is because he had made already, even though he didn't write it down on his proposal sheet, he'd already made the performance out of a big story, you know, Dick is pushing through this book by the end, you know, it's going to happen. So... Uh, he's the one like, to be like, and he's taking that offer. And he's the, just like it says in the codex, like the, the, the governance goes to the person whose offer it is. So in a way, the book offer was kind of held by Dick there. 
and the and the diagrams within that book then would fall underneath. So you, in a way, Pablo joined his offer, right? Totally. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that really makes it really, really, really clear. Um, yeah, I find like having such a kind of modular thinking of evaluation also increases the analytic of how one thinks about it, like or can help with it, help help to keep in mind. It doesn't make you smarter. It just like keeps the tool in the box, so you can kind of uh, see it and uh, and also mm -hmm. immediately then think what is the type of evaluation, like uh, because normal situations, just like you described, Pablo, are um, have this sort of important differences of nuance of who are the persons, what is the style of evaluation. So having kind of expression for that is very useful. So that's great. So then, so here we have, and I'm just writing notes on what to, because I've been realizing this, I need to add some things, like we're talking about them, like, oh yeah, we should add them here, like who needs to evaluate it, you know, um, and having that function there, and also who's joining it, you know? So I think that when we, I think an important part of, uh, of in a week and a half from now, when we do this, it'll be really, it'll, it'll be, it's important to be able to kind of be inscribed, like, because that we're going to bring these things and then be like, oh, I want to join that, you know, it's, it's really like a, a an affirmation, curiosity, mag, magnetism, you know, kind of a lure based, mm -hmm. system, right? So that we need a place to inscribe that as, as well, because the, Offers are going to change, or maybe not. But you know, I think that, like, uh, I know that, for instance, in my kind of emergent work with Marlena, it's really it's great to see that it's like I have my idea about how to do it, and then she's bringing her stuff, and we're going to compose an offer together. It's also easier to work for a lot of people, I think, with another person around something, even if you're just helping each other's offers. You know, I mean, everyone we do this anyways. You want to get together at a cafe and work? You know, we can bang this thing out in an hour. I, I'm so sick of my apartment, you know, whatever, you know, it's a bit in that sociality. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it could be, could be kind of a, exactly that direction that it can offer more as an organizational structure and tool. So there's an open, this performance, but it needs this thing. It's like open box that somebody should or could fill like this open slot. Yeah, that's like right. I remember yeah. like how we've been thinking about it, but kind of for that, so it becomes more like an organizational, not just these finished proposals that are evaluated, but more like an hey, I have these three things, but I'm I need the best base player still, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. This lower. performance to to happen. Well, and that's what's that's what's nice about this this example that we're doing here with Pablo is that it's. Uh, um, you know, it's even though he's already done a bunch of amazing work, it's one part of this. So we're not making we're not we're not stuck to making a proposal performance proposal in in retrospect. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there's he already has kind of a vision, you know. So he definitely I think that that's exactly right. Uh, so here, I mean, it's like uh, you know, name slots that are needed. Um, you know, so that's like so this is kind of like. Uh, Ops and these are and this is the actual stuff. Like I don't know if you want to break it up like that, Pablo. But how should we? How do you want I mean, to? I'm, Go ahead. I'm thinking two things. One is um, when we when I gave this short presentation to Dick to show the cover for the first time, mm -hmm. I did a bit of like uh, um, yeah, my ideas around the update of the official identity. So we could revise some of those ideas here to to create the performance. Uh, in terms of yeah. um, activating uh, through making the visual identity operational in a sense of I want, for example, the grid, the logarithmic grid to become a function mm -hmm. and the yes. logo to become an expression of that function in a way that we can, um, yeah, that it becomes functional in a technical sense. So that is kind of the main driving concept behind the activation of the of the visual identity so that should be here and the other thing that i'm thinking maybe is lacking in this form is the context in which the work is taking place and i mean for example right now because of the book having such a pressing deadline 
I needed to work fast, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it so happens to be that I had the time right now to do so, but that will not always be the case. So that was really fortunate. Um, yeah. But how to how to express that intensity? How to express that maybe that's uh, unsustainable longer term? Like I cannot continue yeah. to work this fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, sort of like that context for at least this first part of the work could be how do we measure that? How is that captured? Would be a question I have. Well, I think that down in the measures, you know, like I think that mm. that's a, let's let's um, let's talk about let's use that as an example right now to because that should be a measure because I think it's interesting that measure is a feedback loop. It's not just a way of justifying; it's also a way of messaging back to the network, right? Like, hey, I'm measuring. But like my time, my uh, intensity, you know, like uh, yeah, intensity. I did not measure my time, but I definitely felt intense. That I can say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, and it, I mean, it shows in the in the beauty of the and the the thoroughness, the thoughtfulness, the multivalence of the work you've been doing, man. It's been super impressive. It's <laughs> thank you. You feel the intensity, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and that you you know, I mean, yeah. So. And what's interesting about intensity is like, well, what's the what's the measure of that? Like, what's the what's the what's the numeri there? Um, yeah, that would that would get close to it. You think like the uh, the hex code of your under eye bags from <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how much how much uh, how much under eye cream are are you going through? You know, <laughs> <laughs> how much ibuprofen I need to take for the back pain. <laughs> We yeah, can measure it in, in right. ibuprofen milligrams. <laughs> I, I would think of it in steps that first name could be intensity. You could put, say, in brackets, something of the quality of the intensity you want to. Mm. Mm, because that allows to then, like, you know, uh, group in families, like if there might be in the end different types of intensity. And maybe with this quality, you want to point out even the negative connotations of this. Also, I agree with Joel that it's it's good to put this in measures. It has some lobby, logical implications, but I, I mm. definitely like for this mode of experimentation, it's very interesting to put this in because this starts to, I think in a good way, complicate the what is a measure. Because yeah. measure mm -hmm. is not just good value. It, it can also be a measure, which is important information of, um, say something negative or something to be watch watchful for mm -hmm. um, yeah. like and and having those in the measures is ultimately making the measures better and then we just have to figure out how to deal with the logic so i, I think it's a good idea of putting it in the measures now and, and dealing with it. yeah I, um, that's really well said absolutely i think i mean being pragmatic the, the ideal situation would be just that i would have been more thorough in recording the time i spent working uh, that would be ideal, I think, but I don't have it. I could estimate it uh, yeah. later on and, 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 and add it. Um, and I guess one thing that I would be, yeah, like being ambivalent mm. about intensity, right? Because it's been very helpful and great for the, for the work. Uh, I think yeah. it also, when you work very intense on something, you keep a rhythm that is really productive but also it becomes unsustainable, right? And my worry would be how not to create an expectation for mm -hmm. this speed of work going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and how that, like how uh, performance uh, can capture those um, different rhythms. Yeah, exactly, man, That's so well, <clears throat> so well said. So I think let's keep thinking about then how to, what how we could how we could measure this here because it's a little bit like time spent working um it's a little bit like time span you know like if you have the time spent working in the time span that together produces a, a measure of intensity totally that, or does it miss what else does it miss no i think that's i think that's great like i could uh, for example what mm. I keep track of is how much I'm working and then how much of that time working I spend on something, right? So 
this past month I've been working a bit more than usual and I've been spending maybe half of that time working on on the exa stuff how much that is I don't know sometimes maybe one day I just work four hours and two of those hours are on diagrams and then one day it's 12 hours and it's six i don't i'm not sure right like i, I don't keep track of it but that could be a good way to 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 estimate it and there's also the, this area for notes on measures you know which uh you know i think that we want to we want to have the numeri which is good but then and then we go here afterwards you know to be like the you know like the mm -hmm. and i'm i'm wondering if the intention is to also come up with some form of standards for measures not standards in the yeah. in the boring sense of um, um make everything the same but in like hey i devised this type of measurement that could be applied in other situations that maybe makes certain operations uh, interoperable in a way yeah, I mean, That's right. in order to develop standards, you first get regularities, like things becoming pattern-like. And I think mm -hmm. like uh, precisely working towards this sort of what is the pattern here is the best way to the standard. Like one would hope one gets a standard immediately or sometimes would hope for it, but like the best way to, towards it is to find the patterns first and then they standardize over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. The other yeah, interesting I, thing about oh, go ahead. about calling the measures is that it's not always that like more is better. I, I don't think okay. like like as you were saying about him, like being ambivalent about, say, the time or the time span, like just because you're measuring it, I guess. I, at first, I was thinking about it like, OK, just under a capitalist economy, I was going in with the mindset that more must be better, more time means more money. But for, I guess we have an opportunity here if we want to maybe to say that like, uh, just because we're measuring the time, do we want a different target within that measure? Like maybe we don't want to target the, the maximum, instead we want to target like a, a healthy middle amount, but still measure time, just measure it differently. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. I think that that's, totally. that's exactly what I think of as the possibility of measuring in a new way here. Like, like because we we want the whole ecosystem to be present, you know, in here in a, in a way. But so we tinker with this stuff so that because like the resource of Pablo as is is an artist and as someone who's willing to contribute to the node, like that, that's a that's a high, high value, right? And so we want that to be um and that's true of everyone here you know and it's like that's we want that to be somehow gotten out here you know um yeah the one uh additional possibility for time is to think about the separation of estimation actual because an offer that starts towards something yet not yet done which is not the case here but like mm -hmm. would normally be you're representing time as estimation um and then but you want to like to uh, towards the end of that when it's fulfilled you want to also record what is the actual time used and that because that's very useful information uh like we can do a lot of things uh, about that but but generally having that information is useful in the first place yeah that's great Um, so, yeah, I guess it'd be really, yeah, and I, I wanted to say too that I, my view of getting to kind of, uh, I see the, the measures that we'll get to as being like the, we've suggested some, we should go look at them, but that as we use them, I think that the ones that are really usable will become more popular, you know, and the ones that get people what they want, the things that feel like they say something for you that's important, Pablo, and, and then other people can be like, oh yeah, definitely, that makes sense. You know, that's almost like these micro union style stuff, right? Like we gather around these different rights in a way that are can be implicit. So it's a, uh, it's really exciting. Um, maybe we can look at the, some of the, some of the um, uh, things here. 
Can I have just a quick brief um, yes. question slash comment? Um, uh, so, so I was curious, I also remembered the, I'm not sure if you, uh, if you are, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, um, uh, I'm not sure if, if you stumbled upon or if you're familiar with the Dada art and their invisible economy concept. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because um, it just occurred to me that part of what they were exploring for the last, I don't know, year and a half, because that's part of their focus, was how to avoid replicating the possible pitfalls or reproducing the pitfalls that can come with measures and measuring. And so they, uh, they like explicitly uh, created the space where they let go of all the uh, kind of preconceived notions of scales and measures and etc and started like approaching the valuation through the lens of collaborative art kind of uh, endeavor and part of what they came up with was the uh, in, in like invisible economy Miro board and I'm not sure if now I, mean, I have it open here I can share the screen for a little bit at some point because it can open up also perhaps like inspiration how to also think with the, um, about measuring slash non-measuring but yeah just let me know if, if it if it's the right place to to show it or if we yeah. can leave it for yeah, some yeah. point yeah okay so i can share the screen yeah there uh, towards to that topic while you're sharing this is one of the reasons why essentially you can look at the, the measure structure here is modular not only the measure structure, but the logic of the measure structure, like the whole structure could work without measures at all. I mean, does it practically work for the group? That's another question, but structurally it can work is, is to have this sort of agnostic uh, uh, relation to measures and, and therefore open the design space to structures that don't do measures or do, do them completely differently uh, or do them in a certain way. Um, they don't really need to change the structure it's just because all the measures here are plugged in in a way like um of course like in the cycle that we put upon it that relies on measures in itself but the basic architecture is not um uh, like a gluing in uh measures uh, let me just uh say uh, that Excel has got to go in a minute, and I was hoping to yeah, to end in like ten minutes, so we don't go too long. Yep. Yep. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, he rightly says let's. So what I was thinking for the the next offer market was a week from Wednesday at two p.m. ET, which is eight p.m. CET, which is eight a.m. New Zealand on Thursday. Um, is that in general okay? Say again. Which which day was it? All right. Let me pull up the. Uh, let me pull up my, do, do, do. It is, here we are, Friday. So it would be the 15th. It's after the, after the uh, Meta Museum application is due. Yeah. So 15th of March, Wednesday, 15th of March. Wednesday, 15th of March. Sure. Good. Yeah, should work. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I, guess I gotta go. Saying, what's that? I gotta go. Okay, thanks, Excelly. Ciao. Thanks. Ciao. All right. So yeah, maybe just uh, if we can, I want to say a few more things about the uh, performance uh, sheet after after this, Jakob. I was hoping to. No, no, please show. I didn't get to. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that I cannot actually speak into the microphone while sharing the screen. I don't know why. Let, let me try once more. And yeah, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, entire screen, share. And yes, can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. We yes, can. we can hear you. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, so it's just that uh, it's, I, what resonated with me was that and it, that since also the uh, the team is mostly 
women that, that their their approach was kind of more feminine and i'm not i don't want to be reifying those distinctions right but it's it, it was this um it had a little bit different sense of um approaching or feeling towards those uh let's say measures non-measures and i thought that perhaps this could also be interesting to connect with them at some point and share and cross share because they mm -hmm. like it seems to me they, they did a lot of co sense making around measures and valuation and capturing it in different colorful ways uh, and like really so so yeah that's just an um, uh, possibility which i wanted to float at some point yeah. actually yes just a mm. what might be an interesting mm. like super fast play test or fa rapid is i don't have access to my report i know um the, the the basic documentation but i don't have that uh like we could take some of the cases from there and and just to sketch up a structure of how could such things be used because i i think it can work quite quickly like like said there is this sort of modularity um so I'm, I'm not to not to do that because it has to be an alternative but it might be an interesting way to explore a direction and uh, and we don't have to spend too much time on it but it's a very interesting possibility to test out yeah i mean and you know it's it's a part of it would be it's a part of something that can be and should be named as um yeah, part of the performances that we're doing, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, and I'm totally open to you know the performance is the word. You know, we had a discussion on the Discord about you know performance and does it connect and you know it's it's really it's in the it's in the book you know and so I think that's the kind of the reason to draw that line there. But maybe it's up to us to kind of really queer that word um, and and uh, in the most kind of serious kind of late 90s way possible um uh you know like because yeah it can i i everything the only reason i want to do all this stuff is to do it in a different way you know so i, I mean i think that i you know i was i'm part of the sense lab for you know i guess almost uh, almost 10 years now and they're all about that kind of thing you know and i love that so much and it's it's the foundational to how i think i also at a certain point, want to have something that's a little bit uh, quicker and more politically, strategically, you know, and you kind of, you take on the, it's a bit more that you take on the pharmacon of the, which, you know, John talks about in his amazing preface. So I'm also interested in kind of being, uh, yeah, and using the stuff that we have here to allow us to kind of mobilize us into something that can, uh, um, help us kind of take less of our time to know that we, to do what we are excited to do. Not so that we get more done, you know, necessarily, but so that we're doing what we want to do in a way that connects and the coordination and the communication with other, other members is happening. And then it doesn't become, which is not, not just uh, something that happens uh, with art groups, but I mean, but I think in a lot of different kind of organizational experimentation, you could end up just, just talking about that, you know, and I think that our art here is a is a is some kind of a holding those together and staying open to being reformatted by that, but also also being like part of the art is to is to do here, you know, and that's kind of fascinating to me. Um, uh, I think I wanted to just say something about outcomes because the outcomes uh, are, are are interesting. We've talked a lot about outputs and outcomes. Um, outcomes. Pablo, what do you think that the, what do you think uh, some outcomes of the, the big story would be? Yeah, uh, outcomes of, of the big story. I would say, I don't know, it's, it's difficult. I would talk about qualities, maybe like, um, yeah, um, quality itself, like something that feels, um, <laughs> Yeah, like the visual identity feels like it's precise and has um, um, con consistency, even within, um, if even if it's diverse in its in its um, expressivity, but that feels consistent. Um, and what about like I feel like your this is why it's nice that they we're talking, you know, about what the 
offers. I feel like your your kind of vision for exhibitional identity is also like as depth. It's like, you know, there's something about yeah. this like kind of expanding universe. You know, it's precise, it's consistent, but it it, it has it has kind of a programmatic depth or something. Totally. I love that idea. Programmatic depth is definitely there as the activation part and as the um, making it operational and making it also accessible, right? Like in a way of, hey, excess visual identity should have an API in a way, a way in which you can interface with it very, yeah, in a very good. fun way, right? Like a playful yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's um, it's functionally accessible, and it's because in this thing, it's not really your job for other people to um, for the eyes to be on it, right? You make like that's someone else's job in a way, right? I mean, you're like so. It's 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 not like the measure would be how many people come. In come and see it because that's someone else's performance in a way you know yeah and that is really Comments. difficult to measure right like if i don't know if we would consider uh book sales how do you define how much of that happened because of the cover it's impossible um so i guess um, even though the visual identity uh is to be seen from the outside I, I see this as a very inwards process within the yeah. organization. Yeah. Yeah. That is like mirroring our our values, our collective values, in a way that it, it is it becomes um, accessible through um, intuition. Like you see it and you immediately feel like, ah yeah, this is this makes me feel uh, good with my work. This this reflects my my intentions. Mm. Yeah, this is a key area and maybe something to think about. It's good that we add something there now to, you know, engage the thinking because uh, the one danger um, in in outcomes described in this way, which often happens, is they kind of become politicized because there's no, there's very little of how to measure it. So what often happens, it becomes a political process in the organization of like, who gets to say that this is the right sentence, you know, like it's, yeah. it's a natural development. Um, but, but precisely like it's, it's, it's also a problem you cannot avoid, like you have to address this area anyway, it's, it's just a hard problem. Um, but it's an avo unavoidable thing to approach. So, so this is like, why to put in like, I think it's even in the codex recommendation is this separation that there is output outcome impact. There's even some something else in, but this sort of spectrum where like sometimes you want to describe an outcome. Sometimes you just want to put an output like and here is a book cover because it might yeah. even give a easier valuation towards that. And, and that's just like thinking about this expressive range. Like yeah. you think differently yeah. with an outcome than an, an output like, uh, so I, I think definitely processing this area is, is, is important. Yeah, that's, that's great. Like that's exactly what I'm thinking about. Like what, there's very precise outcomes as well. There's a book cover, there's the mm -hmm. diagrams, there's a landing page, there's a logo. All of those should be mentioned here. And then there is the um, quality of those outcomes. Mm -hmm. And, and, and necessarily, um, uh, like here, I should do it. Necessarily, outcomes are not the responsibility of a single agent ever, you know? Mm. Mm. Right? Because you can't, like Pekka yeah. was saying, like you can't, you can't control that stuff. And that's what you were saying too. Like there's like, and I think that's really interesting. Outputs can be the responsibility of a single agent, but outcomes are always, mm. you, can't, you can't control Collective, them, you know, yeah. they, but they are, but they can still be things you shoot for. And I think that's the interesting thing about the Magenta book and thinking about um, kind of larger processes of collaboration is that because then when you, when you publicize these, you know, if you say we have some outcomes, because maybe this is not the right spot for this kind of stuff about the visual identity. Maybe this is where we name things that are larger, you know, than which it participates in, right? Like 
outcome, outcome, like the, the book is received well, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah this is like, I would put it, uh, one logic to think about it as is like output is source oriented, meaning like it it can have one person because it's it's really like uh, like there is a thing and where did it come from? Outcome is organization oriented uh, plus the outside, like looking from the organization to outside, like That's it's right. an arrow that comes from the whole organization but goes to the outside, like the talking about how it's received well is talking about the nature of the organization changing, but also the outside. And then impact is outside oriented. Um, that's the, so it's, it's really looking at what happened in the world because of this. I'm, I mean, you don't need all of this, but it's it's one way to think about this classic separation of- Well, and, it, and it's all in that diagram too, um, yeah. from the Magenta book, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 um, yeah that's, yeah. That, like, that's great. Um, is proactive and looking to the outside. And then, yeah, then the impact is what happens. Yeah, what outside. happens in the outside, um, yeah. To a certain measure, right? I mean, we yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all this stuff is kind of, you know, uh, abstraction, but yeah, okay. So that's, so then how about this? This is kind of interesting. Like, what if we took, uh, Let's just move that for a second. What if we, what if we took this and put it here, and took this and put it here? Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know. That's 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 an interesting approach. Yeah. Because then, because then it's like, this is like this is you're you're really proposing, Pablo. This I want this to be measured by its accessibility, that its precision, its consistency, its programmatic depth. And I want it to be measured by time span and the time spent, you know, you could say. Yeah. And this is great. That is fun. This is fun. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a discourse context. Um, yeah. Uh, in other words, a game to play. One, one actually useful mechanic, like for this practice that we're doing could be the use of version numbers to encourage people to put out offers that are not even ready. Like, uh, like say maybe just- Say that first sentence again. Um, to uh, use kind of offer version numbers to oh, put see. out offers that are not necessarily ready. Like uh, in practice, this is very simple. Like Pablo yeah. puts out this offer and puts a number say 0.2 or 0.3. And then if it's one or more, then it's live. Like then that might in encourage this discourse that people come to help because they see that something is coming out, but it's not live. It, they come to help with the counter offers, like what if you put this in and what if you put that in? And then they know when it turns to one, now it's a live offer. Now it's really uh, in, in effect, so to speak. Um, <laughs> so it could be a simple way of, because otherwise people might not like publish the drafty parts, but that might be a very useful thing because of uh, helping people to not only get the offers finished, but also like socialize them from the get-go. Yeah, yeah that's really it resonates come, uh, very much. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say that it resonates actually very much right now because I'm like drafting the unconference proposal and it's like, oh, I need to flesh out this and this. So I haven't shared it yet, even though there is like writings and exactly this would help perhaps like, oh, actually I would love to have a small session to see what are the extra needs for the conference. So yeah, I resonate yeah. very much. Yeah, totally. A space of negotiation, right? Yeah. yeah. Of what then becomes the actual offer. Yeah, yeah. Might be useful because like, like really like, what you can see from this process, this process in itself is making the form, but also the particular instance of this form, this particular offer better, right? Having this sort of social process on it. Yeah, that's great. So this is great. Yeah. I will have to go soon. Yeah. And, gonna... um, but this, I can work on this a bit more, like now that I have all of this knowledge and work thanks to you, all of you and yeah we can revise it uh together
Yeah, that's yeah. I was gonna say let's let's cut it now. Thanks everyone for your time. Over an hour and a half. Um, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna send out the invite for that that meeting, which will be kind of our, our the beginning. We'll kind of kick off the the offer market, and then we'll go into Easting, maybe for three days or something like that. I'm good. I'm, I'm going to share also the uh, that proposal sheet in a new mural board with you guys so that you can copy it, and play around with it, and whatever you want to do. Okay? Yes. Sounds great. All right. Bye.